and you'd all get the point. But I'm going to go over this one and give it a thorough debunking. Uh, the article goes on to say creationist scientists, an oxymoron if ever there was one, uh, believe that the universe was created by God, has order, and shows signs of design, while claiming that these evolutionist scientists believe the universe has no creator, design, or order, and is random. Uh, well, I already explained that you can believe in God and evolution at the same time, so take a look at the other obvious flaw in the statement. The belief that real scientists, as opposed to creationists, do not believe there is any order simply because they believe in evolution. Uh, that's erroneous and laughable at best. Real scientists don't believe there is order. They know it. Only whether or not it is provided by a god is irrelevant, since any god would exist outside of the spectrum of science. Uh, it would exist in the supernatural. Uh, and just like fairies and pixie dust, science can't touch it. Rather, scientists see the recordable natural laws and evidence which has given rise to things in our universe. This part of the article finishes off with a statement that says, Truth is not based on majority opinion, and I cannot agree more with this statement. Uh, this is why that 60 or 99 percent, or <laughs> however the hell much of percent of Americans, uh, that want creation taught in schools have no say over what the real scientists say gets to be taught in science class and if there is any justice it will stay that way atheist statement number two remains now for the final atheist statement number three this part claims that science uses circular logic by saying that the scientific method provides us with truth because it is scientific. The scientific method cannot be trusted because it derives its authority from nowhere else other than itself. Hmm, where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, I say it every time a fundy tries to prove the Bible with, you guessed it, another Bible. This scenario, as any intelligent person watching would know, is different than the circular logic employed when proving the Bible. The scientific method does not rely solely on its own merit, and the writer actually admits that at the very beginning of the section, when he writes, this method produces truth because it is based on objective data, experimentation, logic, etc. Hit the nail on the head on that one. That is exactly why the scientific method produces results which we can trust. It is objective. It doesn't care what the answer is. It is used in unbiased means in order to obtain an answer to a question. With the scientific method, we have a stable equation which we can put to work effectively over and over again. However, with religion, <clears throat> well, it uh, kind of goes all willy-nilly down the rabbit hole. The laws of nature and physics are completely disregarded. As people are raised from the dead, water is turned into wine, man was made from clay, and horses can fly. After stating several more times that the scientific method is uh, based on circular logic and just for good measure, repeating the first atheist statement, which says that it all relies on faith, the article ends by saying uh, that the miracles in the Bible have been scientifically proven anyway. So after going on a rant about how much the scientific method sucks, he says that, uh, whatever. Uh, so he says that miracles, such as the exodus from Egypt, the slaying of Goliath, and the parting of the Red Sea, were all proven. Then provides the evidence, he learned, for only one, the parting of the Red Sea. And I already know about that one. Uh, this discovery was made by Ron Wyatt, not too long ago. Uh, he's an amateur archaeologist who looks specifically for proof uh, of the biblical sense. This is the dude that also claims to have found the spot where Jesus was crucified, along with Noah's Ark, and the Ark of the Covenant. For the record, he is a forklift operator from Kentucky, and no one takes him seriously in the archaeological community. Um, about the wheel him and his wife found, they took it to one local historian, and he said that it matched the dynasty which reigned during the time of the Exodus. After that... Uh, the one wheel they brought up got lost, 
Even Wyatt's wife said she didn't want to jump the gun and call a crusty piece of coral an ancient Egyptian chariot wheel. This place where they found the wheel also doesn't match what scholars have always assumed was the place of the crossing. Uh, and we also have to think, even if it is an authentic chariot wheel from an Egyptian uh, army, is the most realistic answer really that God parted the sea for a gaggle of Jews? Or is it possible, nay probable, that the Egyptians had boats used for transportation? Boats which were capable of sinking? Either way, the author never gives examples of the other miracles he claimed uh, were proven beyond a doubt, but recommends we watch some series on the Discovery Channel. Uh, he then appeals to God, thanking him for providing so much irrefutable evidence for believers and non-believers alike. Right. Well, uh, looks like Atheist Statement 3 remains, and Atheist Statement 3.5 is mind-numbingly irrelevant. Uh, anyway... Hope that cake takes care of Ailey Boy, as well as the article on Blogspot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in hell. Vitamin T.